What's going on guys? It's Gendo here and welcome to episode 24 of the World's First and today is of course the FA Trophy third qualifying round match and we drew against Hitchin Town. Hitchin Town being in the Ryman Division 1 North so they are two divisions below us. You definitely expect us to get a win today against them in advance in the competition. But before we get to that, of course, we must go over all of the matches between last Livecom and now, and as well as a couple of transfers that we made, both in and out. So without further ado, a lot of stuff to cover. Let's get right into the matches. Following the FA Cup win against Boston United, we then took on FC United of Manchester and unfortunately came away with a nil-nil draw. And on top of that, the most significant thing that happened in the match, in the fourth minute of stoppage time, Elliot Pond sprained his ankle. And he's going to be out for the next six weeks. So for the rest of these matches that I'm showing, showing you, we don't have Elliot Pond and it definitely hindered our attacking chances to some degree. But other than that, nothing really to take away from this match other than the fact we almost had 60% possession. In the next match versus second place Lowestoff, it was very apparent that we were going to miss Elliot Pond's deadly finishing touch as we came away with a 3-1 loss. Chris Hall getting us on the score sheet first in the 11th minute, but Lowestoff answered right back just a minute later and then added two more in the second half. 20 shots, 7 on targets compared to our 14 and 6. We did once again almost have 60% possession. But on this day, possession was a negative step. But at least we always got the FA Cup competition, right guys? In third qualifying round, we took on Gainsborough Trinity and came away 2-1 victors. Danny Potter and Alec Przespolewski getting the goals. However, Gainsborough got off to a riveting start, as you can see, in the 35th minute. They led for the majority of the match. We had 11 shots, 4 on target, 55% possession, and it finally came to a head in that 70th minute where we finally said, okay, we're going to finally score against uh, Gainsborough, who are two divisions below us. I thought they were still in the division below us in the Northern Premier. No, they moved down to Division One South. So they were two divisions below us. It would have been a big upset if we had lost to them. Fortunately, we came away with a victory and moved on to the fourth qualifying round. But in between FA Cup matches, we then took on Chorley in the league and only came away with a two-all draw. Very lucky to come away with a two-all draw. Danny Potter getting both goals for us and needed in the second minute of stoppage time to get a goal to knock the match up at two apiece. We only had six shots, three on target. Uh, almost 60% possession once again. I love playing possession football, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I want to turn that possession into attack, and more often than not, it just isn't doing it. Uh, I love having a lot of the ball, love seeing a lot of the ball, but I want to turn that into more of an attack, so maybe some sort of tactical tweak on top of what I already have would be uh, more beneficial than what I have currently. But I didn't change anything up in the FA Cup match versus Ashton United as Benny Igihan scored in 13 seconds in to give us a 1-0 lead and eventually we had defeated them by the score of 2-1 to see ourselves into the first round proper. I didn't think we'd ever get to see that but like I said Igihan with a goal, Danny Potter getting himself a goal as well put the game out of reach as Ashton United were thoroughly handled until the 87th minute when they decide to finally score. But at that point in time, the match was all pretty much wrapped up and we see ourselves into the first qualifying round proper, or actually the first round proper for the first time ever. And extra money to go with it, you can't go wrong with that. Our form continued its upward swing as we defeated near bottom of the table Worcester by the score of 3-0. Benny Egihan, Danny Potter, once again the goal scorers on the day, and once again was a domination all over the pitch. 14 shots, 6 on target, 53% possession, everyone played above average. Can't ask for anything more as we continue to move up the table to try and get into those playoff spots in the Vanarama League National North. However, AFC Telford put that to a screeching halt as they defeated us at home by the score of 2-0 and pretty much stifled any chances that we had on goal. We only had two shots on goal total. Possession was roughly about the same. Overall, the team played average, but as I've said in the past, playing average at this level definitely isn't going to cut it as we need to be, we need to have a lot more players within sevens. We need to take a lot more chances on net. Otherwise, we're going to continue seeing score lines like this and we're going to continue seeing losses. We then took on Newport County in the first round of the FA Cup and unfortunately came away 2-0 losers, both their goals being scored in the second half. And I honestly, 
I didn't expect to win this match in the first place. Newport County being two divisions above us, it was really sketchy to begin with, and as you can see, only three shots, one of them being on target. We did have majority possession, but possession, once again, being a negative stat on the day. I'm glad that the changes that I made to this formation, the 442 Narrow Diamond, retain the possession, but we need to get more attacking movement, better attacking movement into the, uh, the final third and create chances for goal. But we're out of the FA Cup, very unfortunate, but made it farther than I thought we would have. Following the FA Cup match, it was yet again another nil-nil draw, this time to Tamworth away from home. Seven shots, two on target, 56% possession. Team played rather average, except for the back line. They had some sevens on the back line, unfortunately. There was not any push forward to get any sort of attacking chance. Tamworth being very stalwart on their defensive side, and in the end, it just ended up being a very boring match. A 2-0 victory and the return of Elliott Pond against Hedensford as he scored and Benny Egihan scoring in the second half helped push us to get the three points on the day. 12 shots, six on target, almost 60% possession once again. But as I said before, at the very start of this, we were definitely gonna miss Elliott Pond and his strike force. And it definitely showed because as soon as he comes back, all the goals start pouring in and hopefully we can continue this form going forward as uh, Elliot Pond and Benny Agihan are the two leading goal scorers in the club. Whew, that was a lot to go through. So here's what the table looks like after all those matches are said and done. We're currently sitting in eighth place, 27 points through 18 matches. We're five points off of fifth, which is the bottom of the playoff promotion spots. Filed are still in first place, still leading the league. They are four points clear of Boston United at the top. The rest, of the, the rest of the promotion playoff spots are the same teams as they were in the last Livecom. Lowestoff, Ilkston, and Chorley. Um, I really, really want to push into the fifth place. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. We're already punching above our weight, and we're going above and beyond what the press have said at the beginning of the season. So anything above 10th is where I want to finish. And I feel that so far this season, we can definitely do that. There were a couple of playmakers that have been in these last few weeks of matches. We brought in a couple more defenders, let go of a couple of people. Let's take a look at those transfers before we get into the match versus Hitchin. So taking a look at the outs, roughly around the 3rd of October, that was the end of the last Livecom. We did loan a couple of players out, but also at the same time, we did get rid of a few people. Liam Gibson and Joe Fox, two midfielders leaving on a free. Jack Broadhead got snapped up by Kings Lynn, and to be quite honest with you, Jack Broadhead wasn't having the best of time during this season. I felt it was necessary just to get rid of him and get his contract off the books and bring in somebody else or somebody younger that can help take his spot and ultimately develop into a better center back. Now, uh, looking at the ins, I have brought in three people, uh, all of them defensive players, and to be quite honest with you, a couple of older statesmen, a little bit of elder statesmen, just to try and get some leadership and some m better mental attributes. But let's take a look at all three of them. Louis Fezzikurli is coming in as a backup right back, also just to use him at, for his leadership roles to help develop Kieran Coupe as well as Danny Morton. He, he definitely offers a different, uh, different skill set. He's not as fast, but he's very good in his mental abilities, very physical, and hopefully I can use his change of pace to, to switch up how I play against certain opponents. Much like Louis, Kieran Charnock is 34 years old and also going to be a backup center back because I realized I did not have a lot of center backs to begin with. I had more midfielders than center backs and I wanted to rectify that. His speed is a little on the lacking side, but his defensive and his mental attributes are what I brought him in for. Hopefully he can help provide, once again, some more tutoring, some more leadership to help out uh, along the back line. And then while he may be injured right now, 20-year-old Cameron McJanet is definitely someone I want to mold into a starting center back. I, right now, he is a backup to Kyle Lewis and Lewis Kennedy, uh, but I really want him to become that next starting center back. He's got decent marking, decent tackling. His speed could also use a little bit of work, but he's young. He can definitely mold into someone better than what he currently is. So those are all three of the of the transfers that I brought in and now let's get into the match versus Hitchin. 
So Hitcher are going to come out in 442 that we used to play. We're going out with the Narrow Diamond, and this is what the lineup is going to be. Callum Williams in net, Morton, Lewis, Kennedy, and Duxbury along the back line. Piers Oates getting a rare start over Ali Norris on the day. Anderson and Wright being the two center mids. Danny Potter, the AMC, and Elliot Pond and Benny Egihan, the two strikers up front. Like I said before, this should be an easy win. We should see ourselves on to the next round of the FA Trophy, but upsets happen. Got to play these games out. They can't be won on paper. So let's kick off and see what happens. We're starting off very strong, just a minute in, and look at this attacking movement. Anderson, if he slips it into Potter, he does. Elliot Pond, however, gets it in, and it's 1-0 to Sheffield FC. Already off to a great start, and I expect several more goals to go past to help us go on to the next round. And this was all off of a throw-in, too. Great pass from Pond into Anderson. I thought Potter would have slotted it home, but Elliot Pond, following the ball all the way, picks up the rebound and gets the goal. Just about 10 minutes in, oh, a nice ball through to Elliot Pond. He gets the rebound. He takes two shots. He took two shots directly at the keepers, both of them short angle, both of them ill-advised, to be quite honest with you. I thought he would have laid it off. Will Pond lay it off now? He does. Was an, I believe Iggy Han was offside, got the shot off anyway. Kennedy going over the top, falls to Duxbury, and it's just bouncing around. Iggy Han gets it. Um, he's being mugged off by two guys. Lewis Kennedy, just get a pass in. Just find it. Just find people. Morton, getting it out to right. Has four guys in the box. Oh, Elliot Pond, far post, makes it two. There we go. Elliot Pond back in fine form off of his injury, and he makes it two nil to Sheffield. This is some great passing, I gotta say, and that was a good cross in from Luke Wright. Don't really use Luke Wright very often. I probably should, but uh, then again, this is a team two divisions below, so. Take that what you may. We've had 70% possession this match. Insane. So it's halftime. It's 2-0 against a team two divisions below us. We have had 70% possession. I want to call ball game. I want to say this game is over, but you never know. This team may have some sort of weird freak collapse. Hitchin may find a stride and may get a couple of goals, but I'm going to do everything I can to get some rotation in the, the defensive side just to prevent, well, apparently people are being complacent. So um, I'll figure out what I want to do in the second half, maybe some early subs just to get some fresh legs on, some players that haven't played all that much. But we're going to keep going. I'm just going to tell them keep going out there. They're doing, they're getting some good passes in our final third, but now we just need to to get a dispossess. An interception would be good here. Don't foul him in the box. Oh wow, Hitch and get one back. Defense, what are you doing? We have allowed Hitch and back into this game, and I'm not gonna lie, that was some pretty decent passing on their own side. It's pretty much what we did the entire first half, and they turned it around on us. That's some bad passing. Oh my God, that was a horrible pass. And Hitchener coming on a break. Cleared away. Oh, it's a good block. Oh, Morton, thank you for getting it out of there. It bounced around. I thought one of the Hitchin players were going to get it and blast into the nets. We blow a 2-0 lead to a team two divisions below us. I'm going to scream. About 12 minutes to go in this match, and we had a nice interception. Elliot Pond, you're one-on-one. -on -one. Why did you stop? Doesn't matter. He scores anyway. That should be the match decider. He makes it 3-1 to Sheffield. It's his seventh goal of the season, his second of this match, and as I said, this probably should put the, the match out of reach for Hitchin to, to try and stage a comeback. It was a good pass, a good long ball over the top, and a great chip of the keeper. That's all you can do. That's how you win games. And as I say that, we may have another chance. Can we go for four? Alex slips it through to Anderson, and Anderson being on side makes it 4-1, and now for sure this match is out of reach. That's his first goal of the season, and we're going to send Hitchin back to Hitchin. They're going to hitch a ride back to Hitchin, and we don't even get the free kickoff. It's full-time, 4-1, Sheffield. Got, honestly, got to say, I was a little scared when they pulled it back to 2-1, but then the nice quick double fire from Elliott and Anderson helped seal the victory. So overall, a good win, and we see ourselves through to, I believe... I believe it's going to be the fourth qualifying round or it's the first proper round. Either way, it is going to be the first proper round of the FA Trophy, but I really don't care about the draw. We're just going to go and see who we're going to face next in the next episode. 
So there's still a lot of matches left to go in this season. Hell, we may even advance further in the FA Trophy. So I'm going to say when we come back, you know what? Boston United have been a pain in my ass this entire season. I think that we should come back and have one more match versus them and just to see who is the better team on the season because uh, we lost them in the first meetup. Uh, then we obviously drew and then beat them in the FA Cup. I want to try and get a win in them, a win against them in the league. So when we come back next episode, it's going to be us versus Boston at Boston. So until that time, like thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see more FM content on the channel. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else, please leave in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.